Hello and welcome. Has Ukraine's counteroffensive, the big expected counteroffensive, finally started? There are heavy attacks on several points of the front line. We will talk about this in this situational picture. Before we start, I'm going to show you one video that was just published by the Ukrainian authorities that is basically asking for OPSEC and is giving us an interesting teaser. There will be no announcement about the start and plans love silence. This does not affect us here because um, while OPSEC is extremely important, while it's absolutely mandatory for the Ukrainians to keep their plans secret and not to have their citizens publish information, for instance, on Facebook or Instagram, what the information I work with is publicly not just available, by what, but usually watched by at least a couple of ten thousands. I just collect them and analyze them and give my own opinions about this. Today's episode will focus mainly on pro-Russian military bloggers. Many of their postings have been watched hundreds of thousands of times, so I'm not telling i'm not spilling the beans here i'm not telling secrets we start with the attacks on russia because the fighting is not just going on in ukraine it's actually also happening in russia at this very moment shebekino uh, in this area here in belgorod uh, the ukrainians have again crossed the border and captured novaya uh, tvaloshanka this, I call them Ukrainians for simplicity reasons. They are supposedly uh, Russian citizens that are in two, ver two different Russian volunteer units aiming to liberate Russia from Putin's yoke. But there have been proof that there are Belarusians in it too. And supposedly some Polish citizens have also fought in those units, even though, so the Ukrainians claim no Ukrainian citizen is participating, but as the units are being supported by the Ukrainian armed forces as they're operating from Ukrainian territory. We just say that those are Ukrainians. So they have captured Novo Tavloshanka. And while that itself might already mandate a, a special report, we see the map here from Rebar to see the situation where shelling is happening, where air defense is active, etc. While this might already mandate it, there are also some videos of fighting that is happening. There are claims by the pro-Russian uh, military bloggers that those videos in case you've stumbled over them are fake they are not actual videos because the the houses look different and local residents says that's not taken here but even if those videos are fake the fighting is real and they have captured at least two prisoners of war and said to the governor of Belgorod they will hand those prisoners of war over if he talks to them and the latest information is he has agreed to meet them in Shebekino so fighting is going on there they are they have come over the border again but it is not a big invasion or anything like this the bigger news are what is happening in other lines of the front we start with avdivka the ukrainians have attacked it attacked into the direction of vodiane have broken through and reached the outskirts of the town avdivka down here and Vodiane is here, but while Vodiane is mentioned here, the outskirts of the town somewhat is um, yeah, a little a little less dramatic. We see that the town more or less starts not far south from the road itself. And on the map, that would be more or less here where the town starts. So they might have achieved something, but the breakthrough isn't that massive yet. It was done with four tanks and infantry. Usually we see Ukrainian attacks with less tanks. So four tanks is already a, something bigger and the attacks seem to have happened at several positions and they ha seem to have gained some grounds, but no huge breakthrough yet. The biggest news though is from the southern Donetsk re region. Basically, where Donetsk and Saporizhia meet between Rivnopil and Neskuche, 
Neskuchne, the Ukrainians have attacked and according to Riba, they have, uh, read, they have advanced a distance from 500 meters to three kilometers. We have another pro-Russian channel talking about 50 units of heavy equipment, heavy and light armored vehicles. Of course, he's also claiming they already destroyed five tanks and 15 pieces of light armor. But even he is saying the attacks are still going on. The Ukrainians have reinforced it. Now, we have no information. I have no credible information about the actual losses that have occurred there. There, I don't see any uh, geolocalized videos of that as of now. But the big part here is 50 50 um, combat vehicles is much much more than we usually see the biggest we usually see is maybe 10 usually less like six to eight so 50 is a significant attack and three kilometers is obviously not nothing but we need to put it into some perspective usually the absolute front line is defend it fairly weakly as you cannot reinforce it and you cannot establish positions as strong as you can do in the rear. You can't get an excavator there, you can't get a crane to set up a dragon teeth or anything like this because they are, the frontline positions are usually in direct line of sight of the enemy and if you drive a, an excavator there it will simply be destroyed. So what you would have in the front line is some, some ditches, some uh, trenches, but that's more or less it. The bigger fortifications are somewhat behind that and it seems that the Ukrainians with their massive attacks have forced the Russians out of their first line into their fallback position whether they'll be able to cross through that that will be a much bigger question and as of now I don't see any confirmation that they have broken through if they attack with 50 armored vehicles tons of tanks and IFVs APCs etc it is it shouldn't be much of a surprise that the Russians are being forced back so whether this is already the big counteroffensive cannot be clearly said unless we see the battlefield shaping as a definite part of the counteroffensive then we can say it is already happening do the Ukrainians advance further is this going to be a brick Breakthrough will be the question of the next hours and days. But as of now, we see bigger attacks than we've seen in probably months. But not the size of attacks yet that we would expect in the long-anticipated counteroffensive. So we'll, we'll keep you updated here on this channel. We'll keep talking about this. It seems like it's intensifying, but I would not say the... Um, what you would might generally expect as a counteroffensive, looking at videos where somebody blows the whistle and all the men jump out of the trench. This part has not been has not started yet, but the fighting is massively intensified. So we we will we might see some serious movement fairly soon. And the video here of asking for operational silent fits perfectly in that context. Also, more information according to the Russians, the Ukrainians have returned into Bakhmut. But this again has to be put somewhat in perspective. It's not like they stormed Bakhmut. It seems like they have reinforced positions that are more or less down here. They're still unclear whether those buildings here are still under Ukrainian occupation or whether the Ukrainians are still holding that position. But the whole area here with the forest was probably still held by the Ukrainians. Several Russian sites are saying that the Ukrainians have sent troops, they have reinforced it, but I would not expect this to be the start of a new urban combat inside of Bakhmut of a new attempt of a of an attempt by the Ukrainians now to do the same again to recapture the city I would rather expect them to try to envelop the city should they aim for it try a turning maneuver basically forcing the Russians to flee the city to not get encircled something like this I would expect more but at least they are still able to operate here. So we will keep you updated here on this channel about the developments, about the counteroffensive. At that point, I would like to invite you to subscribe and hit the hit the bell icon if you're new here. But before we finish, today is the 34th anniversary of the massacre at the Tiananmen Square in, Pe in Beijing. Uh, the Communist Party of China slaughtered thousands of its citizens there 34 years ago that were... Um, wanted democratic reforms. In China, the information, the history of this event is suppressed and be, is being kept secret. So I think it should be our duty outside of China to remind the world that this horrifying crime has happened. And this is one of the pictures. There's a uh, video with it as well. You can easily find it just by Googling for Tank Man that has happened there. And um, this video was actually taken on June the 5th. 
So this was taken one day after the massacre. This brave man stood in front of tanks, stopping them just with his body after the Chinese People's Liberation Army, uh, what a fitting name, has slaughtered thousands of its citizens. And that was it from me for now. If you enjoyed this situational picture, please hit the thumbs up, leave a comment for the algorithm or what do you think about the current development when you think the, the counteroffensive will break through with their full might. Leave a comment in the comment section. Again, if you're new here, I would like to, to invite you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This channel is only possible because of the support from viewers like you. So if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by the means in the description. Thank you very much to everyone already supporting the channel. That's it from me for now. Thank you for watching and I'll be back.